looks very similar to insurgency movements that we've seen overseas, mm -hmm. where they germinate in different parts of a country and they gain strength and it brings together an unholy alliance frequently of religious, ex religious extremists, authoritarians, fascists, bigots, uh, racists, nativists, uh, even libertarians. <laughs> Liberty lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixie. I am Michael, and I'm here with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. Yeah. We were we should have recorded <laughs> on Wednesday. Yeah. Um, but we decided to go out to dinner instead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Regroup, as it were. It's yeah. been a long week. <laughs> yeah, it, it really has. Yeah. Um, although, you know, it probably would have been good to get stuff out. It would have been nice to have gotten it out a little earlier because this, but I mean, there's been developments about what we're going to talk about since then. That's so, true. I mean, it, we may have actually played it a little better waiting the extra day. Yeah. So. Um, I, I, it, I didn't really take advantage of it. I was going to read up on, on something specific, but I didn't. Yeah. Um, I didn't at all. <laughs> I, uh, so what you you want to yeah, jump we were, into what? Yeah, let's let's have your <laughs> okay. little. We were in the middle of a conversation. Mike was like, "I'm turning on the mic for this." <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, so um, we were discussing the bird nest um, uh, on the corner of my um, porch, I guess. Yeah, you have a porch. Yeah, I, and well, I didn't. Yeah, it's like up in the. On, yeah. on top of one of the beams that supports the corner of the porch. Yeah, it's or on top of the pillar. It, there's like they're a, actually at both ends. Yeah, um, there's, there's a gap there, and there's I knew there were nests in the far one. I didn't know there were ones in this one. Yeah, but I've, they've been there as long as you've been here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> I don't mind. You know. Yeah. Sometimes they get a little noisy, and that's you know, yeah. but it doesn't last very long before the the chicks are out of the nest as <laughs> as, as it were, yeah. and um and then it quiets down a bit, but. Uh, Mentioned, well, he said it was mine. And I was like, well, it's not mine. <laughs> so, well, it's on your property. And I said, well, we certainly know that just because it's on your property doesn't make it yours. <laughs> and so that brought up a, a conversation I had with my neighbor earlier today as I was um, cleaning up some stuff in my backyard. Because up until today, I still had pieces of my fence that had come down in Hurricane Sally nearly a year ago. I've got um, some Sally debris in my yard too. I'm not gonna <laughs> lie. Like, and, and at this point, there's really no excuse for it. Yeah. Other than, I mean, I can say I've been busy, but lazy is really kind yeah. of the word uh, that comes to mind. It's been, you know, a little from Long column enough. A, a little from column yeah, B. Yeah, know. exactly. Um, but so yeah, I finally cleaned out the the last pieces of fence that were in my. Well, you know, I had yeah. to saw them apart. And well, yeah. I, I don't have a chainsaw, so I had yeah. to like get out there and use the old the, elbow grease. Like, <laughs> it's going to be the handsaw method. Yeah, um, and it's a pain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so anyway, the neighbor was came over. Well, not my direct neighbor. I don't much care for her, but the the next one down. Yeah. Um, who's a nicer person? And uh, he came down and he said, uh, "So are you getting ready to to replace that fence?" I said, "No, I don't have any intention of replacing the fence. Actually, like I'm in absolutely no hurry to to put to up do a that. new fence. Yeah. I don't have a dog, so I you know I don't care. Yeah. Um, I, I have no need for it really. And yeah. oh well. And he said, "Well, I mean, but the homeowners association said you have uh, a year to." to get those fences up. <laughs> Since when does the homeowners association require you to have a fence? Yeah. Well, and I said, what are you talking about? It's my property. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he said, yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> he Ooh. said, but they, they said that the, uh, the fence was part of the property. I was like, yeah, which yeah. I paid for when I bought the property. So I bought property with a fence, and if I don't want a fence, I don't have to have a fence. Yeah. You could have <laughs> yeah. took that fence down after you bought the property. Exactly. Like, that's not part of the deal. Yeah, you know? right. Like, <laughs> I, anyway, so that now I have that. To, but I have very little property that you can actually see from the road. I only have these little segments, and actually one of them is still up. Like, the yeah. what used to be the gate into my backyard is still the there. gate is still there even though it doesn't protect anything because there's right, no you side just walk around it yeah <laughs> um and then i have like a you know like a six foot section on the other side also yeah. and so I, I said well you know if they're gonna drive around and look for this stuff i can just put a little six foot section up on the other side <laughs> they'll have no idea right. well <laughs> let me tell you like i'm glad i don't have to deal with all of that i don't have any of that where i live because I would put up, if they came out and said, look, you, you're going to have to put this fence back up, 
they would not be happy with the results because I would come up with the jankiest looking fence, mm. the ugliest looking. I'd be like getting pallets from the side of the road and stuff, and like, yeah, <laughs> painted hot pink. And, right? Yeah. Oh, it would be it would be bad. Yeah. Like I, I'm so glad I don't live in an area where this is a thing. Oh well, I'm not worried about it. I'm sure you're not. I'm. I know you're not. But I'm just saying uh, they're gonna have to actually come tell me. And I don't know where yeah. they announced this thing. I should ask them that. you well. Um, I, my guess would be is you'll get something in the mail if it becomes an issue. Yeah. Um, oh, uh, yeah, I'm sure I will. Well, the last thing I got was just about elections for the board. Yeah. I wish I'd known about this when I put in. This, <laughs> you're, you're, you're in a big enough place here, though, that I don't think it's going to be a, a huge issue for you. But, um, like, some of these smaller communities, like, mm-hmm. it's a big thing. Yeah. Like, well, I'm real close to the entrance, though, too. You are. Yeah, that's true. Um, I said that, you know, if uh, if somebody wants a fence up, then this girl that lives next to me that I don't like very much that immediately marked the property line um, <laughs> yeah. when the fences came down. Uh, she can put up a fence. She's got a dog even. Yeah. She's got more reason to put up a fence than I do. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So let her do it. Yeah. If something tells me that may be the what triggers the you need to put up a fence is she's going to well, report you to that, the, yeah. to the <laughs> that might be the association. case. She's, uh, she... She doesn't have a lot of respect for her personal property, as far as I can tell. So, um, yeah, this this um, could be a could be a fight of brewing. Maybe not. Let's hope not. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And the other thing that I noticed today, and this is total non sequitur, yeah. but I, you know, I've been thinking like we want some fair representation in in TV and movies and so forth, right? Isn't that yeah. like the big thing that's going on? Like we got to have fair representation. Yeah, there's really not enough white people on TV right now. <laughs> Well, no, that that wasn't at all what I was about to say. I was going to say that the the uh, lefties are definitely overrepresented in Hollywood. Oh, there's no question about that. Yeah, I'm, they no. need to start getting rid of some of these left-handed actors. Yeah, <laughs> because it's just not fair that all these left-handed actors are out there. Like they're they're like forty percent of Hollywood for some reason, and um, Only and they're 40? not even. They're, yeah, they're not even close to that in the population. Yeah, no. <laughs> I think they're like 4% of the population, right? Like it's yeah. like 1 in 25. No, it's not that bad, is it? 1 in 16, something like that. I, I, hadn't, I hadn't looked. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> That's definitely the, left-handers are overrepresented in Hollywood. And I think there's a, they yeah. should do something about that. <laughs> Let's take some We action. need to see more right-handed people in Hollywood. Uh, maybe. Hey, maybe. I'm, I'm with you, man. I'm All ambidextrous, right. so like <laughs> my category is really underrepresented, yeah. <laughs> I guess. I don't know what the percentages are, but I'm capable of using my left hand. Yeah. I, I had a real bad injury to my right arm when I was a kid. And so I learned to do a lot of things with my left hand after yeah. that. I even like learned to play basketball with my left hand. Yeah. It's one of those weird <laughs> things that comes and goes for me. Like I mainly, I mean, I technically, I guess I am right-handed. I write right-handed, mm-hmm. but I do all kinds of stuff with both hands. Like mm-hmm. when one gets tired, I just use the other. Yeah. My whatever. mom's a lefty. Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Well, under, um, before, wow, that was a whole lot of nothing <laughs> to, to get started here. Um, well, let me get this out of the way cause that's later. Yeah. So we're, what do we want to talk about first? I actually, I kind of wanted to talk about the Biden press conference just for a moment. Sure. Um, his first official quote unquote press conference. Yeah. So after um, me complaining so much about him not having one, I didn't really watch it. I caught some clips. Oh, but- I tried. Oh, uh, like, was man. It that, so that's been my thing. So when I watched his speech or the, the big national address or whatever he mm-hmm. made a few weeks ago, like I couldn't get through the thing. The guy's just boring. Man. Yeah, exactly. The press conference was boring. I'm sure it was. <laughs> like the clips I saw were not. I mean, of course, some of them were all right because they were like the gaffes or whatever. Yeah. But. <laughs> well, and it, also it was like this weird sycophantic thing like the these press people. I, I almost turned it off and it was like this. Um, let's see. Let me, let me, yeah. It was the second person to ask questions. Uh, Yamish. Oh, you S- Yeah. Yeah. yeah She's the, PBS, the right? PBS one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So she like <laughs> went on this long intro about, um, and it was, the question was about the immigration issues, but, uh, it started with her saying that, um, you know, there's talk that people are coming to the border because of the, you know, because of course Biden was elected as a good um on what would she say uh um, good on border and or 
Lax on border enforcement? No, 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 no. It, it was about his character in general. Oh, oh, it yeah. It was like... Um, well, I knew that he, he had brought it back oh, to his decent character. decent moral man or something yeah. like that. I don't remember yeah. exactly what she said. And apparently she doesn't know a whole lot about Biden if she's saying that either. <laughs> right. um, but uh, yeah, I think she said, you know, like a, it, because he's a decent moral man um, and that's how he got elected. And because of that, these people are coming to the border because he's such a nice guy and, and yeah. so forth. And that was the way the question was asked. I was like, good grief you gotta be kidding yeah. me i almost turned it off right there yeah well, um, because he rolled right on into that like well oh, yeah. I, I may be i may be such a good guy or whatever but that's not why they're coming here yeah like, <laughs> yeah whatever was, dude oh, man, just stroke that ego a little more right but that's it i mean the whole thing was boring I, the thing that actually stood i only made it through about half of it before i was like i've had enough of this i can't do this anymore they yeah. they weren't pressing him in any way it was obviously like everything was prepared and even then he screwed some stuff up like <laughs> exactly um the there was a one where he just got he does that thing where he just gets lost you know yeah. in his answer and and he says yeah what well, you know you know <laughs> like moves on yeah <laughs> Oh man, I wish you would have somebody be like, like just in be the like, debates, no, we yeah. don't. <laughs> yeah, in the debates, he would have said, "Well, my my time's up." <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, you know, it's, it was it was pretty bad, but uh, it did stand out to me um, that the first four questions were a white man, a black woman, an Asian woman, and a Latino. Oh really? <laughs> yep. And then so then I had to ask, why'd they let the white guy start? <laughs> All right. Why did he get preference? <laughs> hmm. Oh, Makes you wonder. I don't know, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It was, it was an embarrassment. I thought. I mean, honestly, yeah. what I saw of it for a Biden for Biden talking, yeah, um, wasn't that bad. Like he didn't. It is amazing. He didn't he make always, a fool of himself. He, he always didn't. seems to get through these things. You never think he's going to. You always think, oh man, as soon as you put the light on this guy, like he's going to fold. And he always seems to kind of make it through. Like it's not nothing spectacular or anything. But he he doesn't he doesn't say any kind of career ending thing like or just make it completely obvious that he doesn't know where he's at. Like <laughs> yeah, and yeah. So. I mean, he did. He did fine. It was, I mean, he said things that were just wrong, yeah, um, or dumb or whatever. But he doesn't get pressed, yeah. So it doesn't matter, yeah. And well, and it's it's a, but it's definitely like a low energy thing. At least like the Trump press conferences, like they were always entertaining, yeah. Like like it was it was like mush CTV for me, man. Yeah, <laughs> like, I mean the whole thing is just better, like you, you know. And you, um, knew, you I liked Kaylee McEnany, oh her too, a, a ton, yeah. <laughs> and like Jen Saki's kind of dull as well i mean yeah and uh, night and day difference between trump and biden yeah. and I, I honestly like i'm not a fan of trump's but oh, no. golly i miss him oh yeah i mean Just, <sighs> if nothing else the entertainment aspect exactly you know? i mean and, because and, everything is everything else is exactly the same well but exactly <laughs> yeah i mean there's no differences there and you never knew what he was going to say or what he was going to shine the light on because yeah. that was always kind of my thing like you never knew like what kind of bomb he was going to throw you know mm -hmm. and i i've I, I've gotten to where, especially here more recently. And those like, accidental truth bombs as well. Oh, like yeah. The, the, well, he said something that no other president would have said that's... That's, that's correct. That's actual, yeah. Yeah, that's actually like he hit it on the head, <laughs> yeah. right? But no, I got to where I like people that, that really push the envelope. Like, mm -hmm. I, I just... I, I, that's the kind of messaging I kind of take towards now, yeah. you know? And I, and I think that's important. Well... To um, push the envelope. One thing that's only partly related to the federal government and Biden made kind of a passing reference to, um, to something about like the, um, passport to get into the town where the press conference was held or whatever. I can't remember exactly, but it was just this kind yeah. of like offhand remark about passports. And, yeah. and so I, you know, as a bit of a prep, I think as much as anything, or maybe it was just in his mind. I, who knows? Yeah. Uh, He's <laughs> it could go either way. Yeah. Um, but the these vaccine passports, which yeah. I don't know, I think that um I started talking about this as something that we definitely needed to fight against when Europe started talking about it. I don't think that that we were doing podcasts together again yet. Yeah. After COVID started. Well, there, and I was like, beware of this coming down the pipe. Like Yeah. This because it, it if you really if you took a look at the situation we were in 
you could kind of see it coming, mm -hmm. like because you every it was kind of obvious whether you bought into this whole deal or not. The vaccine is going to be the way out. Like that's the vaccine's mm -hmm. coming and it's going to be the way out. So then the next logical thing is, okay, well then how are we going to track and know who's gotten the vaccine and who hadn't? Because you already know there's going to be a ton of people out there that aren't going to take this thing. Um, so, mm -hmm. I mean, it doesn't surprise me that you, that you would have been on the forefront of seeing this coming, you know? Yeah. Um, I just can't remember when it came up, but it's come up. Oh, it has. Yeah. Um, and now we're here. Yeah. And, and I remember that like, um, one of our friends at the time was like, that's just nuts. That's not going to happen. Yeah. Well, and everybody, <laughs> anybody, yeah. a lot of people were saying that then, but mm -hmm. I mean, we're here now. Like this, this is. This is a thing. I know we had talked the other night about it, and I had said that I didn't think this was as much as something to worry about as it was kind of being made out to be. Mm -hmm. And now, that was a couple of days ago, and now I'm like looking around, and I'm like, yeah, there's fixing to be a fight here. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, so this, this, they're not going to, they, they've got this idea, the power, and I say the, they being the powers that be mm -hmm. in general, and I don't just mean in government, I mean in private sector too, well, which I'm sure we're going to get into. That's kind of the trick actually, isn't yeah. it? I mean, I think that that's really the trick is that, um, government People, Go there, are, there are attorneys in the federal government that know that they can't really do this. Yeah. That if it's challenged, that they'll have to retract it all. That there's oh, no way. So instead, what they're doing is is just like all these other things. They're just putting pressure on private businesses. Yeah. And it's the same kind of thing that you know that we've talked about with so many things in the past, including related to the coronavirus stuff all along. Yeah. Which is to say, if you don't enforce these, um these regulations, if you don't, you know, follow these rules and your establishment will revoke your business license. Yeah. The, the thing that can end your business quicker than anything is the federal government. Yeah. Like, I mean, and that's just the way it is. So when, when, as when the government's kind of floating and pushing these ideas, these corporations are all going to jump on board quick because they don't want to end up on the wrong side of the government. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a bunch of corporations also, and that some of the corporations, money. oh yeah, tons of money. Yeah. Um, and particularly some of these big tech companies that, that we've been complaining about anyway, yep. that everybody's been complaining about that the left and the right have been complaining about. Yeah. Um, and the, these big tech companies with the, you know, a digital, passport um, ha stand to make a, a lot of money I, I, I think I saw some estimate that said something like 20 billion dollars oh, um, you know for these for this kind of thing it's well, it's, a, it's a lot of money and it's guaranteed money because it's coming from the government they just steal it from you and give it to these guys and a lot of this isn't even it, even with the private sector stuff it's not even so much about the money although it is about the money it's also about the control and the power mm -hmm. because like a the data that they're already harvesting that, the, that they give you that much. Well, more. they're going to get even more now. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, if everybody's required to have this thing, it's going to track you everywhere you go. So they're going to know everywhere you go and not that they already don't, but mm -hmm. it's going to be even more so. Um, what are you talking about? I turned off location services. Yeah. 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 So uh, clearly they don't know where I so am. So they by, must not know where you're at. Yeah. yeah. You know, it's not like it pings a tower every time there's a signal. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know you're being facetious, but I'm telling you that thing, like, yeah, yeah, I know. you know, just as well as I do, that thing's tracking, you know, it, it can have the power off of this tracking mm. you. <laughs> and the truth is I'm less concerned about, um, about corporations having this information than I am about the government having this information. Oh, yeah. The problem is that the corporations are freely giving the government this information. Yeah. Yeah. Um, this is part of the deal. Yep. Um, and, uh, you know, it's this way to work around the fourth amendment. Oh yeah. And, um, and it's been going on for a long time. And I was thinking earlier, like, so how do we combat this? And I, I thought, okay, well it, it obviously what we do is that any of these businesses that require these things, uh, you just say, all right, then I won't be back. Yeah, yeah. And you need to make it clear that this is why, why I won't be back. But the problem is yeah. there's not enough of us. Because well, even if it's – all right, so just take – I'm pulling numbers out of the air. There's no okay. reason to think any of this. So, But let's just say that half of the population – yeah. is on board with us yeah. on this. And so they go to a business and the business requires you to show this vaccine passport or whatever. Yeah. And you say, absolutely not. I'm not going to show this passport. And because of this, unless you reverse this policy, I will never be back here again. Yeah. And say half the population does that. So they, they lose half of their business. Yeah. Um, that's a lot of business. Yeah. 
Yeah. But the government can shut off a hundred percent of their business. Yeah. And that's, you, you make a good point there. The the thing that I think you don't consider though, is this, this deal is going to fold out regionally. Mm -hmm. So like you're going to have parts of the country where everybody's just going to, or enough mm -hmm. people are going to be lockstep and follow in. Yeah. And you're going to have places like Alabama that ain't. Yeah. Well, but the other thing is that like the reason that the refusing to do business with those businesses could yeah could still be influential is because then those people turn around to the government and say, look, I can't do this. Yeah. Like I, I, yeah. I can't make a living with only half of my business or whatever, yeah. you know, the, I, I can't enforce these rules because I've lost too many of my customers. So I'm not going to do it. Yeah. I mean, that's the only way that that really that, works that out. It works. Yeah. Um, and I think you'll find areas uh, where that's exactly what's going to happen. Um, I think, I think we live in one to be particular because I mean, there's just nobody I talk to, even people who's gotten the vaccine are like, yeah, I'm not, this, this isn't okay. Like this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a road I'm willing to go down. Um, and then you have Florida, if I'm not mistaken, didn't they pass some kind of, um, law or something? Oh, uh, DeSantis, Governor DeSantis said that we're not having any of that in my state. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I, I think, mean, I think it was some kind of executive order about yeah. it. They, it's just, a, it's just a statement though. It's not, yeah. it's not but, like it's any kind of enforceable anything. But I, I think, think you're going to see a lot of that. I mean, mm -hmm. at least in some of these Southern states. Yeah. Well, the, the federal government has admitted that they're working with private companies to see how this would do. They're, they're using, um, and, Constitutionally speaking, I would say that probably the what they're appealing to is the interstate commerce yeah. clause. Say, okay, well, if states are going to be doing this, then the federal government has to be involved to um, to create guidelines so that each of the states is compatible with each other or reciprocal or what you know, yeah, whatever. Um, and that's how they're getting involved. Although they're not doing it directly, so they're not directly violating the constitution. They're using private business to do it to for do them. It. Yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, New York has already, you know, got their Excelsior Pass thing lined up. I don't think yeah. it's in effect yet. That's what yeah. I wanted to read some about before we got got too far got started this. because yeah. that one seems to be like a real solid plan yeah. already. That seems and, to be kind of at least close to implementation. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I. So I think you're more optimistic than me in that you say that there's going to be a fight. I think that's more optimistic. I don't think that I don't think that there's enough people that care enough about this to fight about it. I don't yeah. think there's enough people that understand well enough how what what kind of door they're opening. Yeah. To fight about it. Well, and that's where it's our job, the people who are against this thing, to explain it to these people, mm -hmm. and and that's where I think like like really strong messaging comes in yeah. and the use of social media to send that message. Mm -hmm. um, and that's something that uh, not specifically the LP, but some of these state LPs have done a really good job of, yeah. I think. Well, okay. So you would know this better than me. Um, as an employer, yeah. can you ask people about their health information, about their medical history? As it stands today, no. Okay. Um, well, that's what this is also. That's Well, that's really where the... And I, in fact, you're giving that ability to enter a club or a restaurant, yeah. you're giving away health information. Well, that's really, and I think that's where a lot of this fight is, or at least legally this fight is going to battle out. It's just like throwing out HIPAA. Because HIPAA is a thing. And, mm -hmm. and that's been like, you, you, there, I got a whole list of stuff I can't ask in an interview. Yeah. And a lot of it is health stuff. Yeah. Like you just, you can't ask those questions. Mm -hmm. So why would this be different? Like there's, there's no reason for, this to be any different because this is the foot in the door yeah it, well it is because if 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 we let this pass with the vaccine thing every it, it won't be a year or two everything mm -hmm. is going to be in this app and yeah. you're gonna and it's it's just it's you're gonna give up all of your privacy on that it was not that long ago that i'm pretty sure it's during the obama administration that they started pushing about um, opening up people's medical histories to the government, to yeah. government access. Yeah. And people f fought about that. Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, that was a, that was a huge deal to a bunch of people. It was not that long ago that this nation oh, yeah. um, rose up and fought about preventing, fought to prevent government from having access to their health information. Yeah. And now they're ready to just give it away. Yeah. Well, fear will do a lot of things. <laughs> and, um, yeah. 
But I, the the response I've seen, and this is really just anecdotal because it's just kind of what I've seen on social media. Mm-hmm. But um, but it tends to be a bellwether for a lot of things, at least that I've seen. I just don't think people are going to put up with this. I I, I, <laughs> I, really I, I still right. stand by that. Like mm-hmm. I'm I'm more concerned than I was the other day when we talked yeah. because the other day I was like, dude, this ain't going nowhere. And and now I'm like, well, there's going to be a fight here, yeah. and I do think there's going to be a fight. And I'll tell you right now, like this is my line in the sand. Mm-hmm. Like I put up with a lot of stuff from the government. I'm a very non-government person. Like, I, but I've got a driver's license. I pay my taxes. Like I'm against all of these things, but I do them. This I will not do. Yeah. Like this, and we need a we need a lot. We need everybody to stand up and be the same way. Like, no, this is a line in the sand. Like I'm not doing this. It's it's just it's that important. I um so on the No Agenda show a week or so ago, um Adam said something about uh getting a t-shirt that said not not vaccinated f off. Yeah, yeah. I was like that's a great t-shirt. I want that t-shirt too. And yeah. I, I mentioned it to a friend at work and and he said um he saw a t-shirt the other day that said uh um even when the pandemic's passed, I don't want you near me. <laughs> Nice. <laughs> Something like that, uh, which bold, I thought that was a good one too. Bold of you to assume I want to rejoin society. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but okay, so now we get to engage in the slippery slope thing, and yeah. you know you can complain about that. I understand that it's it's a logical fallacy, but like just think about how many of these slopes we've slipped down well, over the years. Yeah, I was fixing um, to say like the slippery slope <laughs> thing is a thing. Like yeah. I mean this this happens. Like once you open a door, you can't mm-hmm. and especially something like this. Um and it's just like any government program, mm-hmm. like you never roll back government programs. Yeah. Like I mean they don't they don't get smaller after you start them. Mm-hmm. Like they they start somewhere and they get bigger and this mm-hmm. will be no different. Like this will start small with just the vaccines and it will grow into a massive um track you grade you like the whole thing. Yeah. Um, and they've already done this in China. It's not like this is some yeah, kind Yeah, that's of, what Dave Smith compared it to, yeah, right? Is yeah, the, and the that's, Chinese that is the right, social score. Yeah, and that that is where this is heading. Like, Make no mistake about mm-hmm. it. This is heading towards that. Yeah. Well, and it, it relates to a bunch of other things, like this thing. Um, so the, uh, the intelligence community um, put out a, an assessment about violent extremists uh, last month. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, there's, uh, you know, a couple of things that I, th- there are a couple of things that are important to note out of this. Um, and it, and I think it leads into some of this stuff that we're talking about now, about what can be a part of this in the oh. long term. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, you know, so one of them is the, uh, the intelligence community assesses that lone offenders are small cells of um, domestic violent extremists, DVEs, that's, that's DVEs they... for the rest of the way through, um, adhering to a diverse set of violent extremist ideologies are more likely to carry out violent attacks in the homeland, and homeland is capitalized. I find yeah. that interesting in and of itself. Yeah. Um, than organizations that allegedly advocate a DVE ideology. DVE attackers often radicalize independently by consuming violent extremist material online and mobilize without direction from a violent extremist organization, making detection and disruption difficult. But what might make that easier? <laughs> I'll just leave that question out there. Yeah. Um, and then the IC assesses that racially or ethnically motivated violent extremists, that's RMVEs, just for reference, um, and militia violent extremists, MVEs, uh, present the most lethal DVE threats, with RMVEs most likely to conduct mass casualty attacks against civilians, because that's happened over and over again, right? We've (laughs) seen a whole lot of that. I I don't know what they're talking about. Um, And MVEs typically targeting law enforcement and government personnel and facilities. The IC assesses that the MVE threat increased last year and that it will almost certainly continue to be elevated throughout 2021 because of contentious sociopolitical factors that motivate MVEs to commit violence. What could we do about that? (laughs) Um in, uh, I don't know, yeah. an app where we track people around and, and study their social yeah, uh, interaction, that social media <laughs> interactions. I mean, yeah. I mean that's 
that's what the door they're trying to open here. Yeah. Well, that's the, it, this becomes a chicken or egg thing too, because the the issue that motivates these militia violent extremists is yeah. perceived overreach by the federal government. Yeah. Imagine that. Yeah. I didn't even think about <laughs> yeah. that that yeah. little connection there. But you're right. Yeah. yeah. The more they overreach, and that's probably what's driven us to where we're at now today, anyway. Yeah. I mean, they they spoke specifically about, um, you know, people being encouraged by the violent attack on the Capitol on January 6th, where, you know, 100 or so people entered the Capitol. I mean, I don't yeah. know. I'm, I'm, there's no reason to, to talk about that any, any further. But um, And then you uh, were asking me about why they made the connection between the racially motivated violent extremists and this international connection, that these people yeah. are connecting with people overseas. Um, and I said, like, I'm aware of one case and I can't remember the guy's name where, um, he had traveled to Europe and had met with, uh, similar kind of white supremacist type groups while he was in Europe and came back and, and, you know, maybe this happens more frequently than I realize. Certainly it happens online. I mean, I, yeah. I, I know that it happens online. I said, but I think that the real reason that they put that in there. Um, is because some of these intelligence communities, like the CIA, uh, aren't allowed to watch Americans. They're supposed to be foreign. Um, they're they're not foreign supposed to have anything to do yeah. with Americans unless they're connected with a foreign adversary. Yeah. And so this so, is how they're making that connection so this, yeah. to, to yeah. let the CIA into this investigation. Yeah. Or this you know this kind of approach. Yeah. Um, and then uh, you know back to the what might be causing this. They say themselves, the IC assesses that several factors could increase the likelihood or lethality of DVE attacks in 2021 and beyond, including escalating support from persons in the United States or abroad, growing perceptions of government overreach related to legal or policy changes and disruptions, and high-profile attacks spurring follow-on attacks and innovations and targeting and tactics. But the, but the one in the middle there, yeah. they could do something about that. Yeah, that one's controllable. Yeah, they could roll back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Roll back. And, but they're not going to. Oh, and this no. is, and this is what I've been telling people over and over again. Like I got in a discussion in a checkout lane, um, with a lady the other day about how, you know, this was all theater. Yeah. And so I, I was in the store without a mask on at all. Yeah. And as soon as she started talking to me, she just pulled her mask down to talk to me the whole time. <laughs> um, yeah. and, uh, and she said, uh, I, I said, you know, well, it's all, uh, you know, I went over the study, uh, out of Denmark and, you know, I'm, I tend to lecture everywhere. So yeah, <laughs> this was no different, right? <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, I, I said, you know, it's all theater. And she said, well, unfortunately I don't think this theater is closing anytime soon. Yeah. And I said, that's cause we've got to do something about it. Yeah. I said, they never give back anything that they take away. Yep. If you want your freedom back, you're going to have to take it back. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah. going to have to just say, I'm not doing this anymore. We, we've ended up in this position, and, and you're absolutely right. We're not going to, without pushing back, we're not going to get out of this. Like, we're just not. And that's the reason I had said earlier, like, like I like strong messaging. Mm -hmm. And, and like, like Trump or not, like, he used <clears throat> strong messaging. And he did a lot. Like, he got, I mean, he won the presidency yeah. through strong messaging. He also grew the government. Well, and he yeah, he's, get out he's, of not he's not a libertarian. He, yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. not a libertarian. But my point, not, that's not really my point, though. Oh, that does remind my, me of another thing before. I'm sorry to interrupt your point. Please come back to it. But um, from the uh, the press conference yeah. is uh, Biden saying, if we leave Afghanistan. Oh, the if we leave Afghanistan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Man. Just just put that in your pocket that we ain't leaving in th this four years. Yeah. Like, you can, you can bank yeah. on and that. And as soon as we don't leave, there's going to be attacks on Americans, and that'll be the excuse to stay. Yeah. When we could have avoided it by following the the agreement that was already made. So exactly. sorry, back to your point. No, but strong messaging is my point. Like like weak messaging, especially as far as the LP is concerned, mm -hmm. will get us nowhere. Like we can't stand by and put out these little weak things. Like we're gonna have to be bold in how we how we approach things. Yeah. Um. I mean, that's the only way we're gonna we're gonna do anything and grow this party at all. Mm -hmm. uh, because we're a minority party. Um, we're not going to grow through soft messaging. Yeah, well, that's certainly true. Um, I I would rather um, we draw a few people that are are absolutely on board and push away some people that are wishy washy. Yeah, we don't need them anyway. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, we don't. Like, I mean, we we've got to come out strong. We kind of do, but I, well, I understand we, what you mean. We do. We, we need them to vote we're, for us. That would be nice if vote. they voted. For well, us. but they'll get. Here's the thing about the wishy washy <laughs> ones, though. Like, mm -hmm. when the time comes, they'll jump on board. 
Maybe. Um, I, I think that it will run into the same thing we ran into in the 2020 election, which is when people are afraid, they'll vote for the... Lesser of two evils. Yeah, or what yeah, they perceive as yeah, the lesser pick, of two evils. They'll, they'll uh, as usual, treat um, elections like a horse race where they're just trying to pick the winner instead of yeah. choosing a leader. Yeah. Um, so. Well, like I say, bold messaging, that's kind of my thing. We need mm-hmm. we need to come out strong. And, and this is serious stuff. Like, this vaccine passport thing is coming. Yeah. Like, I mean, there's, there's a fight brewing about that. Mm-hmm. And if we're not bold here, we're not going to, we're going to lose this. And yeah. I mean, we will lose this country if we lose this. Yeah. Like, I mean, think of some of the lists that already exist, like the travel ban lists and, and so forth, the, you know, no fly lists. Oh yeah. They, they don't even tell you that you're on. You find out when you show up at the airport and they won't let you on a plane. Yeah. Um, and there's no way to appeal it to my knowledge. Yeah. And so forth. And, and think of all of these things now being connected to a single, uh, excuse me, a a single digital ID that has all your information on it, um, that they force you to have on their, your phone. I saw this like, um, really, uh, um, let's see, what's, what would be a good word? I can't come up with a good word. All right. A, A really unhappy accusatory article about, um, Russia, uh, mandating that all phones in their country have Russian software on them. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. And I, I can't remember. It was a, um, it was a, a U.S. mainstream media um, so outlet, we, though that yeah. that wrote this article, yeah. and they were very, uh, you know, of course this, oh, this is uh, just more authoritarian stuff from Putin, blah 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 blah. Yeah. While at the same time, the same organization is now advocating vaccine passports in the U.S. Like, what is the difference? Yeah, yeah. What is the? I, I don't. I just don't see it. There, there is no difference. It's other than that's then we're the good guys and they're the bad guys. Exactly. Our government would never do anything to, to, you know, harm us or blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And as, uh, as captain Malcolm Reynolds said, yeah, government is a body of people, usually notably ungoverned. (laughs) Yeah. That guy's got a lot of good quotes. (laughs) (laughs) My my favorite one is may have been the losing side. Still not convinced it was the wrong. Yeah. Cause I feel like that's me like to the core, (laughs) like uh, libertarians in general, that's us Mm -hmm. like maybe the losing side, but it's not the wrong side. (laughs) (laughs) I I think my favorite is a, it's my estimation there's never been a man had a statue made out of him that wasn't one kind of son of a bitch or another. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, oh. But <laughs> moving on from that, yeah. uh, i got to yeah. get back to that. Um, I, mean, I don't know if there's that much more to say about the, the vaccine passport, but when they're trying to identify the domestic violent extremists based on, and they do yeah. point out that, the, you know, these lone wolves that they can't, they have such a hard time um, tracking and so forth that they're influenced by their social media and and so forth. Well, I mean, they're introducing the idea that, well, we can prevent these problems if we just watch what everybody's looking at on YouTube and Twitter and what have you. Absolutely. Yeah. That's, that's really kind of a good place to round us out. We can keep you safe this way. Yeah, exactly. To think that the vaccine passports and the this domestic terrorism stuff isn't mm-hmm. going to morph into the same thing. Yeah. Uh, if you don't to to think that that's not going to be how this plays out if we let this vaccine passport yeah. through mm-hmm. um is just naive. Yeah. Well, and to me like okay, so you get on a plane. Let's let's use like a real kind of traditional passport area. Yeah. If you get on a plane, um and you're vaccinated and you believe in the vaccine. That's why you're vaccinated and you're scared yeah. to death of this virus. And so you went and got the vaccine so that you can be sure that you don't get the virus. Yeah. What do you care if the guy next to you had the vaccine? Or yeah. Not? So that's, that's a good point because they, and I heard that exact scenario mentioned today on the news, they mm-hmm. were talking about, you know, we've got to have this passport thing because, because you don't want to be sitting in the restaurant or in the line at the grocery store next to somebody who hasn't been vaccinated. And all I could think is like, if you're vaccinated, why do you care? Yeah. Like, why does it matter? Not like, vaccinated. F off. Yeah. Like, I mean, it doesn't like if, if the vaccine is so good, then why are you so concerned if everybody else has got it? You got it. You're good. Yeah. Like, let me take. And that's where the libertarians have the right approach here mm-hmm. is, you know, I mean, if, if once you, it's available to everybody, then people can make their own choices. You can make your own risk assessment. Mm-hmm. And, and that's just what it is. I mean, and, and I, I do yeah. believe it is a risk assessment. Like, I mean, taking it or not taking it. I think you're taking a risk either way. You just have to decide what's right for you. And just because we 
you know, I, I, we've both spent so much time on this podcast bashing the vaccines for not really being vaccines or not being effective or, you know, um, or being dangerous, talking, talking about the coronavirus. Yeah, actually, I mean, I think there's around a thousand people who have died in the U S from vaccines, from yeah. complications, from vaccines already. Oh, you had the let, point you were yes, going down. <laughs> I, I, I do. And I'll come back to it. Um, circle back. Uh, let me, so the, 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 let, let me make a quick, <laughs> a quick note. Um, but, that reminds me of something else that I just wanted to mention um, briefly. Uh, you've heard about this big kerfuffle about the Oxford AstraZeneca um, vaccine in the EU. Like a bunch of EU nations have now banned it because um, oh, yeah. because there's been uh, reports of blood clots. Yeah. Um, and from what I've seen, the uh, the the number of people who have had complications of blood clots, the percentage isn't outside the norm for any population. Really? Right. Yeah. yeah. So, um, and I'm not saying that this is the case, but it's there's a real possibility that the people that had blood clot issues after taking the AstraZeneca vaccine, yeah. it didn't have anything to do with the vaccine at all. They <laughs> just had pl- blood <laughs> clot issues because this is something that happens to humans, yeah. and it, it hasn't happened at a at a percentage um, statistically significantly higher than uh, any random then population. It would happen just if you took a group with the yeah Yeah, any random population so um maybe it's an issue maybe it's not and i understand being concerned about it and maybe there is like a legitimate concern about the possibility of complications from this vaccine that's making these eu countries um ban the vaccine but this is what i think it is yeah i think that it was because it was developed in the uk yeah that just left the eu Oh, didn't think about that. And that it's really a political thing, yeah. um, a, a kind of F you, you to the to yeah. the UK for leaving the <laughs> EU. We're not going to buy your vaccine over here. Oh, wow. Um, and is, you may be right. Yeah, And they've also been complaining about the UK keeping vaccines at home. Yeah. And so now they're like, all right, keep your vaccine. And we're going to make a big deal out of all these, uh, these blood clots. So now your people don't want to take your vaccine that you were not exporting anyway. <laughs> oh, wow. You may be right. You may be onto something there. Like, if you don't think these things are political all over oh, the place, yeah, you're just wrong. You're yeah. being naive. Uh, oh, absolutely. Willfully naive, I would say. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, but back to the point that I was going to make. And just to be very clear for people that don't understand, because we we talk about the specifics so frequently with the vaccines and the virus itself and how, you know, the, the messaging is mostly lies and so on and so forth. Um the libertarian position is not anti-vaccine. No. Um, and it's n- certainly not that the coronavirus isn't a real thing or a- anything yeah. like that. The libertarian position is simply this, that people, individuals, are perfectly capable of making their own risk assessments and making decisions that they think are best for them. Yep. They don't need to be coerced by a government to do what's best for them. Yeah. And that's absolutely, I mean, when I'm talking with people, that's the message I'm always trying to get across is mm-hmm. that, that there, there's a lot that's wrong with this situation, but everybody's got to make their own decisions for themselves. Yeah. And it's the same way with the mask. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, I'm, I do get irritated I'm when I see little kids in masks. I'm pretty <laughs> irritated with the mask. Oh, I'm pretty irritated mm-hmm. with the mask situation. I'm mm-hmm. about where, um, I'm about in the same place with the mask as I am with the, with the passport deal. Yeah, okay. Um, so I'm pretty upset with the mask but at the end of the day i don't really care if you wear one the thing i'm irritated about is that you're making me wear one like i could care less if you wear a mask or not what i care about is the fact that i've got to wear one (laughs) and and i've got to where i just don't anymore (laughs) like i just i i would i'm and i'm becoming one of those people that is ready for confrontation when approached about it (laughs) yeah i'm not looking for confrontation but i don't wear a mask yeah, I, and I, I haven't for a while now. Yeah, it's it's I've kind of evolved into this, but mm-hmm. I mean, for a while I just wasn't going in places where it was required. So, yeah. but I've decided at this point I'm gonna go in those places. <laughs> at least to date, nobody said anything to me except for government employees. When I went into the ABC store, they yeah. told me that I needed to wear a mask to enter, and I said I don't have one, yeah. and I'm not going to wear one. Yeah. And it, so instead of allowing me to fully enter the store, I had to stand by the entryway and tell them what I wanted them to get for me. And then it was just like, 
like almost like a catering service, except that I was already at the store. And then it seemed kind of nice. Oh, well, there you go. Except well, that I didn't get to browse. I like to browse. The the only place I've encountered a lot of pushback was at the casino, believe it or not. Yeah. Like they, they are very well, strict. Because they're like kind of on the face. It's like uh, yeah. when I was talking before about them um, them really using bars. Yeah. Um, because uh, liquor licenses are something that they can. They can control. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They can yank that in a hurry. Yeah. And Same that's thing this, with a gaming license well, in a southern state. That's that's, that's exactly it. And I knew that that was They're the not case. Indians. They can't get away with <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, they're not going to be allowed to just go with that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, indigenous, I don't know what we're calling them anymore. Native uh, Americans. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Yeah. Anyway. Need to ask Anthony. Yeah, he could give us an answer on that. <laughs> <laughs> so, but yeah, like I say, very, but yeah, just to, like I say, <clears throat> kind of round things out. Like this, this passport thing is a dangerous deal, and mm-hmm. and the the terrorism stuff is gonna morph with it, mm-hmm. uh, like quick. Like, yeah, I mean because they're already pushing this narrative narrative hard. Yeah, I mean it's it's coming. And I know that I know that people are um, talking about well we can fa- fake these papers, the papers, the various papers. Yeah, or, yeah. like. That's not how we want to do it. I we ju- just want to oppose it entirely. Yeah. Just I, outright. Just don't let it happen. I've joked about that a lot, but in reality, you're right. Like that's mm-hmm. that's not how I'm gonna play this. Like I won't be forging my papers or working around mm-hmm. the system. I am absolutely not going to follow the system. <laughs> like, yeah. That's like openly, like mm-hmm. the chips will fall where they may. If a year from now I'm in a concentration camp somewhere, so be it. Like mm-hmm. this is the hill I'm willing to die on. Yeah. Like I'm not going to look back and be like, I let this happen. Yeah. Like I'm not like, I absolutely am not going to do that. Mm-hmm. I agree. Um, Refuse and to be I, a and I hope more people feel that way. Yeah. And and we'll find that we're going to find out because like this is coming down the pike one way or the other. Like this fight's mm-hmm. fixing to happen. Um and and everybody needs to figure out where they're going to be in it. Yeah. Like make your decisions now. Like, so. How how much do you want to be controlled by your government? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And <clears throat> and make no mistake, we'll, we'll I will reiterate it one more time. Mm-hmm. This is control from the government. Yeah. I don't care if there's private enterprise involved this is control from the government make no mistake about it yeah yeah and and make no mistake that this is just the beginning yeah oh yeah that the the covid vaccine is just the beginning and then they just keep adding more and more stuff that you have to have on this thing more and more information that you're required to show wherever you go if if we let this pass it's not this isn't going to be a slow crawl yeah it's the end of privacy it's yeah and it's not going to happen slow like if if we if this if this passport thing ends up becoming and coming what it's supposed to be i mean we're a year or two from Mm -hmm. it like it, this isn't going to be a decade from now. We're wishing we hadn't done yeah. this. This is going to happen fast. Yeah. And I know a lot of people say that privacy is already over, but I'm just not willing to let go that easily. Well, I'll, I'll say this, like there is, and, and that's kind of my thing with the, like, like I was making the point earlier, like I pay my taxes, like I have mm-hmm. a driver's license. These things were all kind of put into place before my time. Mm-hmm. Like, I mean, there's been driver's licenses forever. Like taxes yeah. have been around way before I was. This is new mm-hmm. and we can stop this. Yeah. Like this, I'm not going to be on the side of just letting this go. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not like that's, that's not that can't. And, and we're going to have to take this on. Like we have to. Yeah. Yeah. We need allies in this fight. It can't just be the libertarians. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's absolutely true. <laughs> there's not enough of us. No, there's definitely not. We will be in that camp and y'all will be, <laughs> be dealing with y'all, the country. Y'all be through with us. Y'all, y'all be rid of us finally. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And you'll wish you hadn't been. Yep. Um, so I've only got one more, I hate to say a little thing, but like short thing anyway. Okay. Um, this is back to the Asian hate. We, we did talk about that on the last podcast, right? I think so. I'm um, pretty sure that was on the podcast. We did. We've discussed it. I don't know whether it was on yeah. air or not. Pretty <laughs> sure it was, though. Um, so, you know, again, I'll say this is a, a small issue um, and opposed to hate crimes and so on and so forth. Uh, the, the Asians are targeted less than, than other groups, and the crime is up overall all over the place because of the lockdowns and the um, poverty that is created probably more than anything else. Yeah. Um, but... Uh, there were a couple of videos that came out of New York um, last week yeah. that were just egregious. Um, and I want to talk about like not the racism part of it so much as as the other aspects of it that I think are worse. Yeah. Um, so 
All right. So there are two. One of them was uh, this guy, um, this black guy beating up this Asian guy on a subway in New York and just beating him and like choking him and from behind and so forth. And, and right. the guy, the Asian guy ended up unconscious on the floor of the subway. Oh, wow. Um, and, uh, and no, there were a bunch of people on the train I'll just fix this watching thing. it happen. You're talking about on a subway, right? Yeah. Like I don't know that, that are subways ever empty. <laughs> like it's not like it was an, not really. Yeah. No, it's not I like mean, it was even an, then. They're they're like the bathroom for homeless people and stuff. Yeah, no, it's probably that might not be true. <laughs> I don't know. That, that was a joke from oh. Futurama. Anyway, um, the other one was was even worse. And uh, so this is a, a security video from inside a store, and it's like pointed at the front door of the store. Uh, like through the windows. Yeah. And um, so you see these two people come from opposite sides of the frame. And, uh, and this, this black dude just front kicks in the chest, this tiny old Filipino woman just huh. kicks her to the ground. And then he starts like kicking her in the head. Really? Yeah. At, like repeatedly Yeah. just kicking her in the head. And then when he's done, he just starts walking across the street. And he's allowed to do that? Well, and that's the thing, is that there's <laughs> at least two guys in the store. Yeah. They watch this happen. They don't They don't yell at him. Yeah. They don't try to intervene. They don't even pick up their phones to call the police or anything. Wow. And then that's the second worst thing yeah. a- about this. Yeah. The worst thing about this is when it's over and the guy goes to walk across the street, one of those guys walks towards the open door of the store. Yeah. But he doesn't go out there to help the poor old woman. He goes over there and closes the door. What? <laughs> wow. Yeah. No, that's that's just insanity. Uh, and so you said this happened both in New York? Yes. That's crazy. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, wouldn't happen in the South. No, <laughs> and it, it doesn't matter what kind of level of racism. There, there's a... Uh, I think this is something that people don't understand about the South. Like we we're held up as the example of racism, which I think is a is misnomer unfair. anyway, it, but well, it's unfair. Yeah. Um, but there's such a strong tradition of courtesy in the South yeah. that that would never be permitted. And like fights are okay. Yeah. Fights that both people <laughs> that know. both people are attending. Like, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. But even even in those scenarios, like when the fight's over, it's over. Yeah, somebody breaks things up when th- before yeah. stuff gets out of hand. Before thing, yeah. Before somebody gets like killed, killed. Yeah, yeah. Well, exactly. Yeah. Like we're not gonna just like let it go on. Yeah. Once somebody goes limp, that's the end of the yeah. fight, and somebody steps in the and fight's breaks over. it up. Yeah. Um. And no fight would ever start where somebody well. I mean, it might start, but it wouldn't last very long if some yeah. guy came up and kicked an old woman in the chest. Yeah, I'm just saying, like, that wouldn't happen. I mean, I'm not saying, yeah, some guy may come kick an old lady in the chest in the South, mm-hmm. but he's fixing to get shot or at least held at gunpoint until police get there. Yeah, um, I figured there'd be about four people around that would beat the crap out of him. Yeah, and that's but, the more likely scenario is yeah. that, yeah, that's not happening. We don't like, tolerate that kind of thing We're not having that here. down here, <laughs> yeah. no, and... And that's the reason you don't hear a whole lot about that type of stuff happening mm-hmm. here because, like, like we just don't tolerate it. Mm-hmm. Back to Captain Malcolm Reynolds. Um, yeah. <laughs> he says, uh, you know, if I ever decide that I'm going to kill you, I promise you'll be facing me and you'll be armed. <laughs> nice. <Yeah. laughs> um, uh, maybe a good quote to end on. Okay, <laughs> we'll just leave it at that. If I ever decide to kill you, you'll be facing me and you'll be armed. You'll be armed. Mm, okay. Um, well, I mean, I just wanted to bring that up because I, yeah. the the thing that that bothered me the most about both of those videos is that nobody tried to intervene. Yeah. yeah. That people just stood there and watched that happen, and it blew my mind. I, yeah. I just couldn't believe it. Yeah. It's and then the guy closing the door. I just yeah. I think that guy should. <laughs> should char- face some consequences be, as well be charged under the good samaritan law <laughs> <laughs> something man it's unreal yeah it's a, a lot of people are just i don't know man it's it's a crazy they're, they're thing. cowed they're yeah. just yeah yeah like and this is why i'm concerned about the the passport thing going through is yeah. because i think that the many americans are just obsequious at this yeah. point that they're just willing to submit to authority. Yeah. Regardless. Yeah. Without any real question. Yeah. Well, I'd, 
like I say, I'm it's that's my number one issue now. Like mm-hmm. it, it like for until we defeat this, this is this is this is my hill to die on. Down with IDs. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I want all IDs gone. Yeah. <laughs> well we'll just we'll just concentrate on this one for we'll now. Start on, we'll start on yeah, for now, but <laughs> yeah. like I say. So. Um Okay, well, uh, we were just over a week. We didn't do badly this time. Not too um, and uh, we expect to be back in a week again. Um, and uh, let's see. In the meantime, uh, follow us on Facebook and subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Yep. Like and share. Absolutely. Um, definitely share. Please share. Yeah. Like this, people, people need to know this is going on. Yeah, and I don't think is, it's getting enough coverage, and I don't think people realize just how dangerous it is. Yeah, um, uh, I I wholeheartedly agree with that. And so, like, let people know if this if this surprised you. Think about how many other people it be it will surprise. Because if you're listening to this podcast, you're probably keeping track of a lot of this stuff anyway. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so definitely share. Let people know and and speak out. Yeah. Make sure that people understand just how bad this is. It's the only way we're going to win this fight. Yeah. I mean, it is the only way we're going to win this fight. <clears throat> and and um, so we'll be back next week when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. Mm-hmm.